Yo guys, what is up? Today we'll be unboxing and reviewing Pandora's Box Arcade Station, otherwise known as Pandora's Box 5. Now this is the original Pandora's Box, not the other bootlegs like the 5S and 6S. You know, when you think about it, aren't all Pandora's Boxes bootlegs to begin with? The 5S and 6S are simply bootlegs of a bootleg. Never mind. As always, if you like the video, <laughs> maybe subscribe. All right, so here we are. Here is one quick look before we take everything out. We got our power cable, HDMI cable, AC adapter, USB cables, and some Chinese VGA cables. Hold on while I adjust the camera here. Some extra buttons and finally the instructions manual. Oh man, the anticipation is killing me. All right, let's get a better look at this thing. There's actually a good amount of weight to it. Right off the bat, I can say I'm really impressed. The artwork looks amazing. Super sharp, nice color, no fading. I can tell they use a very expensive printer for this. And it seems to be protected by some sort of plexiglass on top. So far, I'm pretty happy with this. As you can see, it is about two and a half inches off the table. And for those interested, there is about nine inches between the first and second player. The one complaint I've been hearing about are the quality of the joystick and buttons. And yes, I can confirm, they are complete garbage. I mean, even before playing anything, I can already tell the stick is going to be trash. It just feels super cheap. Yeah, you're definitely gonna have to switch these out for some sandwas. The buttons are just... Ugh. All right, moving on. Across the top, you got your coin button, home, select, R2 and R1, D-pad, and the start button. And on the second player side, an exact replica. Except instead of the coin button, you got a pause button. And on the left, you got your vent. Now, if you want to replace the joystick and buttons, all you got to do is unscrew these bolts here. It's pretty easy to get this thing open. Finally, we got more buttons to look at. Here's the power button. AC plug, HDMI, VGA, audio, volume control, and settings. People, I cannot stress this enough. Push this button when you need to adjust the settings. There is no setting options in the menu when you turn on this device. I spent almost an hour trying to figure out how to enter the settings menu. You'd think the settings would be built into the program, but it's actually a hard switch on the joystick itself. This is the button you need to press. The manual does a piss poor job of explaining this. I had to go on YouTube and find the solution. The last input is the USB. Okay, so for those who don't know, the Pandora's Box is a series of bootleg JAMA arcade boards manufactured by a company called A3 Game Electronic Technology since 2012. As you may know by the number on the box, this is the fifth iteration of the Pandora's Box. Each iteration adding more games than the previous. This version, which you're looking at now, has 960 arcade games. Now, I can't test out all the games because I'd be here till the end of time but I'll try my best to give you an overall review. First off, I have to say it's very easy to use. Other than the issue I mentioned earlier about getting into the settings option, this is simply a plug and play device. I have this connected to my HDTV through HDMI right now. I've also tried it with my computer monitor through VGA and it works just as well. 
There is one minor problem. Since the device outputs in 720p, the video will be in widescreen, meaning you will get a stretched image. If you're one of the lucky few who has a TV with a 4x3 mode, then you might be able to get a 4x3 image. But another problem is that the Pandora's box is very picky on what monitor it will allow to display a 4x3 image. My LG monitor wouldn't allow me to display in 4x3, but for some reason my Samsung 4K would. It's weird. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that if you want to play these games in their original aspect ratio of 4x3, then consider getting an old VGA monitor with that aspect ratio. A lot of the newer HD TVs out there will only allow you to play in 720p widescreen. Which brings me to my other complaint. When these games came out almost two decades ago, high definition was not very common. So when you're playing these old arcade games on a 55 inch 4K TV, just keep that in mind. I even tried it on my 30 inch Vizio and it still looks a little weird. There is a feature found in the options menu and I think it's on by default, which allows for an effect to help smooth out the image. The smoothing effect is either hit or miss. I personally don't care for it. Although I did notice it helped with the screen tearing and flickering that affected some of the games. Surprisingly, and I can't believe I'm saying this, the video quality actually looks better when I was reviewing the footage on my laptop than it did when I was recording it. If I had to make a comparison, I would say it's like the first time I played a virtual console game on an HD TV. There's nothing wrong with the image in a sense, it just doesn't look all that great when you blow it up on a giant TV. In this case, I think smaller is better. Get yourself one of those like 17 inch HP monitors from back in the day and you'll be fine. As for how well some of the games play, well from the best of my knowledge, they play pretty well. This is as accurate to the arcade as you can get without actually having to build your own arcade cabinet. Some games produce a little more screen tearing than others. Some had sound issues like Superman where there was no sound effects. But for the most part, at least with the games I was interested in, played pretty faithful to his arcade counterpart. Control wise, this is where I personally have a problem. I bought this mostly because I'm interested in playing some of the fighting games from Capcom. And these joysticks and buttons are not responsive at all. Trust me, I know. I play enough Street Fighter V to know how a joystick should function, and the ones that come with the Pandora Box 5 are not adequate. If you're serious about playing any of the fighting games, then consider replacing them with Sanwa parts. On the other hand, games like The Simpsons, Ninja Turtles, or any similar beat-em-ups work just fine with the stock joystick and buttons. So now for the big question. Is the Pandora's Box 5 worth your money? Personally, I would say yes only if you're willing to throw in more money. The sticks and buttons need to be replaced, and if you don't already have one, consider investing in a 17-inch HP monitor. If you can manage that, then it's definitely worth it. There is the issue with screen tearing and flickering, but they don't happen often, and they don't distract from the games. As long as I can play a near arcade quality version of X-Men Children of the Atom, then I'm happy. On the other hand, if you're an arcade purist, I would say stay away. You're better off just building your own arcade cabinet and using the original arcade board of the game you want to play. The screen tearing and flickering will annoy those who have grown fond of these games, and anything less is unacceptable. But what do you expect? There's 960 games on this thing. You can't go wrong with that.